Hey folks, I'm back. Delighted to be back as well. And thank you all so much for all of the kindness that you've shown in responding to my video about building a studio. I've had literally hundreds of responses, emails, and I just want to share a few with you before I show you what I've decided to do. So Kerry Turner, hey, thanks so much. Excuse me if I'm sweating tonight, by the way, folks. It's early evening. I've had to wait until evening this time to, uh, A, it's a weekday, and B, it's been boiling hot here in the UK. Um, really hot weather. Uh, so Kerry Turner said, I'm in my final year training as an architect and just thought I'd give you a heads up, Re, some of the issues raised in your video. Uh, with a 2.5 meter ridge height, the minute you pitch the roof, you lose the majority of headspace in a four meter wide development. You mentioned slates, which are usually laid at 30 degrees, immediately creating internal floor ceiling heights of approximately 1800 millimeters at the walls. Uh, in terms of construction, timber will be just as weatherproof and waterproof as brick, but would perhaps not suit the local vernacular. Possibly the cheapest, easiest method of construction would be as follows. It's hard to comment without context, but from your description, I would use brick and block full fill construction onto a trench footing, finish floor level to be minimum 150 above ground level. Any internal non-acoustic walls could be structural, 100 mil block work, uh, flat zinc roof, I'll come back to that, 400 mil deep, with a five degree fall affording you clear internal floor to ceiling of 2.2 meters. Any ceiling lower than that can feel particularly oppressive. I'm pretty much building what you've said here, uh, Kerry. I'm really impressed with this. Uh, this would give you a flat internal ceiling, which would help a lot with acoustics. It's all about proportion. My university thesis was on acoustics, and in particular auditoria. With a flat ceiling, you can predict the scatter energy and proportion your studio to that of a shoebox auditorium. A length of between six to eight meters should suit the four meter width, which is good news. So yeah, I've decided on a brick and block cavity construction uh, and Kerry confirmed that for me. He did say on a te pre tedious note, please know that there are just these are just guidelines and should be checked with your local planning authority. I've emailed my plan to the local uh, planning department um, and I've also spoken to my neighbours because I wanted to be neighbourly and also because I wanted to check that they wouldn't have any objection. Um, Barry, you don't give your surname said if possible try to have aluminium or pvc channels built into the floors evenly spaced running from front to back for utilities and cables etc and i think that's a great idea um i won't go into the acoustics that you mentioned because i've got a i've got a, a bit of a confession to make on that but you did recommend a sliding door and i'm going to go for either a sliding or a bifold i think but not sure yet um certainly the uh, design i've done has got a bifold um, and Igrut says, don't make the recording room too dead. Give it a nice character. I'll come back to that as well. James 76 says, brick and slate roof would be very nice if you have the budget. Very important to get a proper, properly damp proof concrete floor and not single skin brick walls. Blocks with cavity, insulation, etc. Or go for a log cabin style if your budget is limiting factor, to be honest. Don't forget to allow for underground power cable from the house. Absolutely. It's going to have its own power and data rather than Wi-Fi, as you rightly point out. Thank you very much. Doug J. My only advice is security locks. Alarm it and make sure they can't get through the roof. Yeah, security is important, although we're rather lucky in that we've got completely walled garden and we are also, although not overlooked, we're surrounded by other properties, so there's not direct access to any side of our property. Um, Matt Hyges. Oh, hey, Jess. Not never sure how to say this. Uh, hi there, good video as always. Yeah, you have the right idea. You want the structure to kind of match the house. Well insulated for weather and recording, especially well insulated for sound. Not so much on the inside, but on the outside. And I'll come to that as well. Uh, Eddie Julian said, just build it yourself. You have hands. Yeah, but not the time. I wish I did have the time. I'd love to build this myself, but that's just not going to happen. Uh, Strap Magic, your new studio must have its own bathroom. You can't have your mates and other assorted hangers on running into your home to use your facilities. You also need to look into baffles as it would help with bleed and allow you to play live and record in, a, in smaller spaces without having to create a separate room. The trouble is it will definitely need planning permission uh, for plumbing. So, And also the space that that would take up. It's only a very small 
recording studio uh, well general studio which i'll come on to uh but thank you strat magic uh john cran said thanks for another great video as i am in sub tropical brisbane australia i really don't have any suggestion for the outside but inside a blank wall that could be used as your green screen wall for videos you've given me a great idea there thanks john um of course the elusive soundproofing i do like your videos where i can see through the window at how you're having one of your three days of summer and it's certainly been one of those today uh that's the missus take on english summers as she's from hemel hempstead well hi to the missus uh, thanks again. Uh, Luke Thompson said, you've got support over here in the States, bro. Can't wait to see you start on it. Thank you. I've always got great supporters from all over the world, particularly the States. And it really does mean a lot to me. That's why I keep making these videos. Randy Charlton says, I would make it match the house and the wall. So I say brick. In the UK, you can get old brick from dismantled buildings. This way, the brick will be close to matching. And I look forward to seeing it done. Yep, agree. I think it's got to be brick. Um, not only that, but for fire regulations and building regulations, if I'm going to go under permitted development, anything between 15 and 30 square metres needs to be ostensibly um, not made from combustible material. Uh, what do we get to? Daniel Leonov. Wait, 1850s? Yeah, this place was originally built in the 1850s. We do have old houses in the UK, uh, Daniel. Craig Pass from the Parsec Guitar fame. <laughs> As for the outside of the building, follow your dreams, ideas, planning commission rules and your budget. Yeah, all important budget. Uh, my ideas for the inside would be it'd be nice to have some plumbing for a sink or perhaps a toilet. Make it comfortable and climate control for your gear. Yeah, I, again, no space for the t toilet and plumbing. And also, I don't really want to go for the planning if I comply with planning uh, permitted development. Um, but yeah, for sure, although n not none of my guitars are going to be stored there permanently. It's just going to be, it's a studio space. And when I say studio space, it's not just for recording studio. It's got to be for these videos and art and all sorts of different uses. So yeah, um, he goes on to say, have storage room for your cases and big items. Not really needed because they'll be in the house still securely locked away. Uh, use this storage room to create an ISO box for recording. Now that's not a bad idea. I've, I've been thinking about some isolation boxes. Um, um, and I think it would be a great idea for when I do want to um, mic up a cab, but we'll we'll come into that in a little bit in a bit, and I'll explain why, if that makes sense. Uh, make it cool, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure about um, air conditioning, but if it's anything like tonight, it's going to get very warm in there. I'm officially jealous, even though I have about a 20 square meter area for my stuff. Oh man, that's so cool. Love to see some pictures of this studio, Craig, so if you want to send them over to me, Fantastic. Uh, Carl, three strings in a box leech says, how about a converted shipping container? Uh, can be clad if preferred, about the right size and waterproof. Yep, the only problem is, as I said, we're surrounded by properties and I really don't fancy the idea of the hire of a crane to get it over the roof and into the back garden. Uh, but other than that, good idea. Tall Thin Kev, my good friend, has said, if you haven't done so in the name of everything holy, check with your council about planning. Just because it may be permitted doesn't mean that they or the neighbours won't keep, kick up a fuss. I had a very nice old workshop I was going to turn into a studio, stroke rehearsal space. No, can't change the use. So four flats are there now and the neighbours can't do a thing about it. Well, I did check with the planning department. I put in a, um, a pre-planning advice um, request and I also went round took the plans that I'm going to put up for you in a moment um, to show my neighbours and say what I was intended to do make sure they had no objections uh, again very sensible ideas tall thing Kev thanks very much Roy Scriver says on the topic of building studio I would focus on acoustics the acoustics won't be a problem although I will be trying to soundproof the control area if and when I do use it as a recording studio because obviously when you mix you want to have a fairly dead environment just a little bit of reflection so that you can really tell what it sounds like uh, he goes on with loads more great advice and and help um, but he's definitely saying brick for sure um, and also two layers of plasterboard and also the angle of the plasterboard. I totally agree. Sound reflections, if you make a room a, an odd shape, they won't bounce backwards and forwards between the walls because the deflection will send it around in all scattered directions, which is great. Um, and I've got an idea for that as well. Yeah, and I'm also going to have a smoothed power supply in there. Um, when it comes to the, the walls and reflection, you'll see what my idea is in, in a short while. Uh, but thanks for the good luck wish and, and having good fun. Uh, EO Tunton, no, Tunnan, uh, 
Sounds like you have a pretty good idea how that studio should be built and look like. Maybe it's a good idea on soundproofing uh, from the mainland for you. A company from Berlin builds cabins or rooms with wood double layer walls, space between them. I've no clue, but it gets filled with sand, the gap. Yeah, sand is a, is a novel idea, um, but it takes up so much space. Uh, but it would give good heat insulation, I admit. So yeah, there's some great ideas there. Thank you. Um, sorry, I couldn't pronounce your name right. Uh, Brian Savage. Uh, great to hear Pete return with the new building. My advice is to ensure that any HVAC, so high voltage uh, uh, alternating current, is silent. Do think about how hot or cold it will get in that space. Have humidifiers for the dry times of year if you plan to store guitars in it. I don't, but it's a good call. Definitely want to be able to cool that space down more than heat it up because when you've got bodies in a small space, and especially when and if we record or possibly stream the band from there, then we will get fairly hot. Uh, Ken Whelan says, Hi, can you dig down to increase internal ceiling height? Uh, if you're putting a foundation in, this will give you the chance to tank an area used for the building. Yep, absolutely. But it may need a sump and a pump, which might cause noise. Uh, um, and so it depends on how often that would need to run, how wet the ground was, the height of the water table, all that sort of stuff. Good thinking, though, could actually make it a much better ceiling height. Really good idea, Ken. Thanks for that. Alex Walker, hello, love your channel. A couple of thoughts on your studio. Secondary glazing is better for sound insulation than double or triple glazing. Also much cheaper. When we had our house extended to accommodate a similar space, our builder found some insulation with which doubled as good soundproofing. Though because it's in the wall, it has next to no acoustic or sound treatment properties. Base traps, other sound treatment is easy made, though. Sounds like a cool project. Keep the faith. Yeah, thank you. I do feel that... Um, Insulation options are key, but only to keep the heat out in some respects. Although it could get cold in the winter as well. Uh, per Perry Hellion 77 said, do you guys in the mother country have access to prefab building kits? I haven't found a suitable one, but um, yeah. Thank you very much for your kind comments about the part of cast. I'm hoping to be back with those soon. Uh, EJC, my good mate over in the States who are sometimes hang out with with on the Lance Moss hangout. Um, yes, thank you for this. Make sure the guy you have do the work knows how to make a studio. Hey, I don't know if he knows how to make a studio, but um, he certainly is a great builder and uh, I've worked with him a lot. So he's a great guy. I know him personally, so that's gonna be cool. Over the hill, cheap guitar noodler. Thanks for the update. I'm doing a similar project, doing all the work myself. Good for you, mate. That's brilliant. Um, it was talking about the roof and slate and all of that and I have thought about that and about the pitch uh, and also somebody else gave me the same idea about the floor trays and cables which is a great idea um, and yeah I have most of the gear for it already uh, so I don't uh, necessarily need to buy any studio gear I've got a few um, bits and pieces that I can put in there to kit it out already that I already use for recording not only the um, R16 but I've also got uh, a, a larger digital audio mixing disc. Uh, James Raymond, always enjoy your videos and good luck with your studio. I couldn't resist the thought of the Great Wall of China skeptic as pun of the day, because of course my wall fell down. Thank you very much for that, James. Yeah, always smiling after your videos. When I first hear your voice though, I thought, David Brent. I wanted you to hear, to hear you say, uh, get the guitar, Gareth, uh, but I don't really see the, uh, the connection other than the fact that a lot of Americans think that all of us English sound the same. We certainly don't, and uh, I would love to be able to do a David Brent impression, but I'm not sure I can. Um, finally, Daniel G. Frost, can't wait to see the studio of yours built. The more content, the better. Cue the Benny Hill music. So just for you, Yakety Sax, Daniel G. Frost, uh, I'll uh, add that to this video, just for a bit of fun as underscore. So, key things for me that come out of this. Thank you all so much, first of all, for being kind enough to take your time and give me all of the input that you've given me. I've taken it all on board and hopefully you'll like what I've come up with as a design. Um, one of the things I have to put across, most importantly, again, and most emphatically, it's not just a sound studio. It's got to double up as a, um, a, a, a video studio for my YouTube, uh, it's got to double up as a rehearsal space for the band, potentially somewhere where I could stream the band live to you guys. Um, so it's got to be a good multimedia space and it's going to have lots of different uses. You know, we may end up opening it up for parties. So it's not always going to have the recording equipment and stuff in there. So it really is it needs to be a multi-use space. So I can't put permanent 
dividing walls in, but I did have a great idea about um, the acoustics and the studio. Um, first and foremost, for recording and streaming the band from there, I think isolating all of the equipment and doing direct DIing for all of the instruments, including an electronic drum kit, would be a great way to go. And remember, this isn't a commercial studio I'm building. I'm not going to have multiple bands in to record various different things. This is just a space for me to use to get me um, out of the house, to free up a room in the house because I'm using the study as my studio space at the moment. And it's quite small in here and uh, must be annoying for everybody else when I'm making videos or playing the guitar uh, and they're next door trying to read or watch the TV or things like that. So it really is just to get me an isolated space that's a little space that I can customize for myself. Um, greedy, greedy, greedy devil. <laughs> but yeah, so looking at electronic drums, um, I'm also looking at doing lots of emulated direct sound, so guitar through guitar rig and things like that, and bass, um, our bass player's just got a um, an input that he uses to his iPad that sounded great at rehearsal the other night. So effectively, we could have almost a silent rehearsal other than the voices with the headphones on and hear exactly what our recorded sound's gonna be like. So let me know what you think about that. I know that there'll be some purists that say you can't beat acoustic and you've got a mic up guitar cabs, but I agree. I think for proper recordings, I would isolate the guitar in isolation cabs and booths and build in um, something to record the uh, the speaker with a microphone. But for rehearsal and basic recordings, and uh, actually a lot of my recordings have been DI'd and, and some of these emulators sound really great. So. I'm thinking along those lines. Also, I tell you what, you've you've waited 16, nearly 17 minutes so far. Let me show you a picture of what I've designed based on everything you guys have said. It looks a little bit like this. This is the perspective elevation and what I've decided to go for in terms of um, specification is block and brick cavity wall construction to include a damp proof course. Uh, color cast contrasting bricks on the corners and around the glasswork to suit the uh, local style. So if you look on the corners there, you can see that I've got a contrasting brick color, which I think really fits with the local um, style and age of the house. Uh, EDPM rubber roof to a minimum slope. So yeah, five degree slope, as somebody very rightly said, with a maximum ground height from ground level of 2.5 meters so that it stays within the permitted development on, on the local planning um, rules. Uh, an overhang cedar faced uh, roof edge um, which overhangs by about 150 mil all round. Um, I'm thinking of some sort of triple glazed bifold door opening from the house end uh, and a single triple glazed full length window at the house end as well, just to let some light in. But you'll see in a moment where I, uh, where I intend to use that um, other end, which won't have any windows in it for the, the place to put the recording stuff. Um, internally, plaster finished walls, LED ceiling lights, insulated flooring, laminate floor covering, six double sockets, main sockets outlets, and two separate feeds from the main fuse board for the lights and sockets. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. You've just seen the perspective elevation. Here's the side elevation facing the garden, the long elevation. And then finally, here is the end elevation with the single full height window in it facing the house. So. I hope you guys like that. But what I've also decided to do is internally have the thing built as a complete skin and a complete open plan space, but then put some felt covered um, full height uh, movable walls on the inside. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Here's a picture with the felt uh, boards or dividers pushed back against the wall and they would be hinged in and out. And here's another picture with the two coming out to join to separate what could effectively be a control area and a recording area. And there's nothing to stop me putting a Perspex window in one of those so that I can see through into there. And it would give me a way of separating out the space. Also hooks around the top of the walls all the way around would allow me to hang curtain and cloth and drape so that I can deaden the space when I want to use it as a recording space. Also, these felt covered walls could quite easily be a green screen 
solid color so it would double up for the videos let me know what you think about that um, so yeah it, it would include a booth I've, I've had an idea for a, for a third wall um, section that moves out that could create a little booth space a vocal booth space um, and yeah it just could be a lot of fun they could be three different colors of felt covered um, folding wall that come out and change the shape and the acoustic properties of the space and I can hang some drapes around the walls when I need to but then when I want to create it as a huge space to rehearse in or to make these videos in then I can fold them all back into the walls and I can have a nice big light open airy space with big bifold doors that open out to give me some natural light thanks so much everybody for your input i hope you haven't minded me rambling on for over 20 minutes on this one but i'm really excited about the project i'm waiting for a reply back from the local planning office to make sure that my plans and the drawings and the sizes and dimensions i've given uh, do comply with permitted development and if they do it looks like i don't need any planning permission and what's more, my neighbours have already given it their blessing, so they won't object and they'll be perfectly happy with it. I've explained what I'm using it for. And yeah, all things sound really good. So fingers crossed for that. As always, let me know what you think in the comments down below. It's been a really long video with me rambling on today, but I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've uh, got the fact that I've taken your feedback on board and I've really listened to what you've said and I think between us we've designed what could end up being an awesome space all I've got to do now is get the builder in to do it and hopefully find the funds that I need which shouldn't be a problem I hope um, I'm waiting on a quote from the builder to make sure that it's well within our budget and then full steam ahead and I will keep you folks appraised the whole way through the build from start to finish you'll get uh, a full video documentary vlog of this so please if you haven't already like the video subscribe to the channel if you want to see all of that good stuff and i keep promising i'll be back with a part of caster but i have another really really interesting story to tell you in the next video which i'll be making very shortly and it relates to some appalling treatment of somebody buying um, a guitar in china so i'm going to cover that next and then i will be on to that nut on the part of caster and i'm sorry if it keeps on teasing you with the part of caster it's not my intention it's just that these videos get made as and when i get the opportunity to make them so anyway folks thanks so much for sticking with this video and sticking with me as always and watching this till the end lots of love to pete and beth who are now actually as we speak now they probably landed in dubai on their way home at this precise moment in time but they've flown back to new zealand this morning and i know full well that they'll be watching this once they get back we had such a lovely time with you guys thanks so much for a wonderful four weeks while you're over it was so good to catch up and we'll be out to see you no doubt um, as arranged everybody you take care of yourselves and each other and have a good one until i come back and see you on the next video take care So, Fat Man, who is this China guitar skeptic fellow? I have absolutely no idea, but I am gonna subscribe to his channel. Ooh, good idea. You know what? I might even join you.